Welcome to another video and welcome to Koror. Yes, that's right. Welcome to Karor. Been here once before on the channel. I was with Gary last year. We went up and did a one row called Ben the Lap. Um, to get to Karor, um, it's not just a, a simple case of hopping in the car. As you see, I've, I've left my car at Kranilara and hopped on the train. Obviously, before I even did that, I had the obligatory McDonald's breakfast stop. Um, that's almost like a, a must. <laughs> so got that down as, and then hopped on the train here. Um, just for the record, this is the, the highest train station in the UK, I think, or definitely Scotland, um, at 411 metres above sea level. Um, it's also one of the most remote areas to get to in terms of like, it's about eight miles from the nearest public access road. There is a couple of cars here, just in case you're, you're, you see that in the background and you're thinking I'm talking rubbish um but yeah you have to have a, a kind of license of that to be allowed to come in here you know like for for beating or or for doing any work um we've just had an absolute fantastic camp up on that behind us the famous hill the hill the, the one that's made famous on train spot and as you probably get already by the little hints i'm giving you uh when tommy wanted to take the boys up a walk there and that's where we we're camping that's where we went camping last night and a fantastic night. So you're in for a cracking video. So get that watched. So anyway, roll the footage. All right, so we're literally just starting on the walk to, I'm going to see if I can get this right, Liam Ulium, um, which is the Corbett in this area. This is also at the point of the walk where I'd normally make some cheesy reference to uh, train spotting, eh? So, why not? <laughs> you know, this is what I do, so, of course, Let's do a wee cheesy reference to train spotting. This isn't natural! What do you mean it's not natural? We're in Scotland! Oh, I'm in a brave! So, 
we kind of did our own wee version there without any swearing this time, so I'm being good. Um, but, just in case you weren't quite clicking on to what was on about there, this is where they filmed that iconic scene in train spotting, as I mentioned that on last year's video. Um, so, we're on our way up the, the Corbett, as I mentioned earlier, and you may be wondering why are we picking such a place to camp rather than one of the Munros? Why aren't we doing a new Munro or why aren't we going up the Munro I've already been known that there's a great camping spots up there? However, there's a reason and all will be revealed at the top and we're, we can explain why and why that we say that's just the perfect place to put a tent. Right, onwards and upwards for us. We'll check back in in a wee while. We were going to push on to the summit and then we thought we'll just have a quick five minute stop, get the bags off and shake off for the final pull and um, we're in a wee bit here where the, the wind's getting sheltered but there is a bit of a wind, you know, like a 15 mile an hour or so um, so we'll see how it is when we get to the top but um, looking good, looking lovely um, and I'll tell you now, the, the reason why we picked this hill over the other ones is quite simply the view, you know um, and already we're seeing the view that way we're seeing the view over the hill, we'll see higher up you know, from behind us, it's just spectacular. So that's what you got to look forward to once we get to the top, is is that view. Uh, and then there's maybe a couple of bonuses to come along through the night, but we'll, we'll deal with that then. So anyway, I think the next thing I'll do is, is we'll get, as you'll see, is at summit, and then we'll probably be just getting tents up and uh, getting pitched up ready for the, for the evening ahead. All right. Oh, what a cairn. So I just finished the walk up. Um, I need to tag the top of it, so I need to find a way to get up. There we go. Ah. And that's me. Some of the point. Well, the next job is to find a suitable pitch. And I'll tell you what, we're spoilt for choices. I wait for Stephen. He's just uh, filling up some water. Um, it was one of them ones where you've seen a few on the map, but they weren't quite as good as we thought they'd be. I I hate taking the risk with things like that at times, especially on a mountain that I'm not familiar with. So I just hoofed it up. So I am going a little bit slower than him, but on the flip side, I know up here with all my water that I need. He won't be long though. Um, and then we can start working out whereabouts we pitch, how close to this summit we want to do, or you know, I'm looking at a wee drop off over there, thinking that might be quite quite a nice spot looking right up into uh, Glen Cole. But again, I'm not going to talk about the view, so I'm going to talk about that properly once we're all set up. But for now, yeah, I'm going to sit and chill. Um, I'll wait for Stephen uh, and then we'll go over. We'll get set, set up soon. Um, views, views, oh my God. <laughs> views to die for. It's amazing. I don't normally film this bit, I thought I will for just a wee change. What we're doing now is we're doing a bit of a, you know, the, the cairns. The cairns there, it's behind me. What we're doing is just a bit of a 360 walk to try and locate what we think will be our ideal pitching spot. I say normally, but in this stage of the video, I just go and get pitched up and then I'll show you once we're at. Just to give you a bit of insight, we're looking at things like, like right, where Stephen's at there, you know, flat pitches, um, without rock, not too boggy, giving us the view we want, that kind of stuff, uh, and then we make the decision. Anyway, I'll join you back in a bit. Both of us pretty much with our tents up, just got the 
a little adjustments to do. And I've got us both in shot to show you that both of us are in chicken pole tents. Um, the ones that are maybe new to camping or wild camping and small tents. And I wonder what I mean by trekking poles. I mean, like, our trekking poles are, are what are holding the tent up. So I've got what's familiar to my channel, four class MT900. And over there in Stephen, he's got a Durston X Mid, which will give you a proper look round in a bit. It's quite a unique design for anyone that hasn't seen one of them before. Um, all I've got to do now is just get everything tightened up. You know, there's little points here and little points there. Just make sure that, that all my guys feel secure, all the pegs feel secure, and everything's taking even tension. There's no one corner that's got more than it needs to be. So you have these little, one of the little tests is that, you know, so I want them to be drum tight now, so what I'll do is I'll slap that off, pull it in, and clip it in place to make sure I'm tight. I wouldn't say it's the perfect pitch, um, but again, we're on top of the mountain. What to expect? But I would say it's not bad <laughs> at all. And when we show you the view, I think you'll agree. Um, and that's coming pretty soon, I think. So, in fact, you've probably already had a couple overlays briefly of the, of the view. But um, at some point soon, I'm going to sit down with a beer and show you, talk you through everything that we're seeing around us because it's, uh, it's pretty stunning um, and then we can go over the x -Mid. maybe do that in the morning actually, save that for the, the morning footage um, but yeah, we're going get, to get finished set up, get all the inside set up I've got a couple of different things to talk about that's inside the tent tonight so we'll get that put in and we can show you properly Ah, so we're all set up now, bedding's in Got the um the thermals on or got dung gear on in a wee bit as well once I start feeling like the the sun starts to go. Um the view's stunning. But I think what I'll do is I'll start showing you um what we've got inside the tent here. So um first thing I'll say is if you look at the back where my head is, I couldn't we couldn't find a perfect level pitch tonight. So what I've done is I've used my bag to push under it, which is gonna give me a bit more of a lift under my head. Underneath that as usual, it's the uh, Etherlite XT um, mat. I do tend to keep that all year round, um, and the way I keep it in a winter one is by using the, the foil blanket. Um, I do keep toying with trying to get a, a bigger R rated one, um, but I don't know, we'll see. Um, and then the new thing is this mammoth sleeping bag I've got in there. Now, there's pros and cons. So. Um, it's a huge sleeping bag um, in terms of its, its volume, it's, it's nearly two kilos, which is quite a lot heavier than any of my other sleeping bags are. Um, and it's also synthetic rather than down. Um, I got a synthetic one because I was fine in Scotland, we get a lot of nights where we get a lot of condensation. And when you get condensation in a down bag, you often then get the drop in temperature because they get wet and it just goes through it. And it kind of defeats the point of a down. So I just don't stuff it, you know, I, I, for an extra half a kilo or a kilo, I'd rather just have a bigger bag, um, a thicker bag, and then I know I'm warm. Um, the downside though is down packs, down pack, packs really quite quite small, you take the air out of it, where synthetic ones tend not to do the same, and that really was quite awkward to get in the bag. So if I had to repack my bag differently than I would normally pack it, which has got me thinking whether or not I need to get a new bag for that, a bigger bag to, to cope. Um, so far, everything that I wanted for tonight's camp has fitted quite nicely. But if I was going for a longer one, or maybe if I wanted to bring like my pan and steaks and stuff like that, I might have been pushing it. But I, I don't know, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but um, I'm dying to try that out, so I'll give feedback in the morning what it was like. Um, but I'll give you a proper look at that in a wee second and show you what it's like. Um, so that's my, set, my setup for the night. And as you can see, I've been in my four class MT900 as per usual. Um, probably the last time I would have thought this year. Um, about in this, um, I would imagine in the next few weeks we should be into icy and snowy camps. So, um, and by then it'll be the, uh, the Simone Macaulay too. Um, I would have thought. No, yeah, yeah we're just gonna sit back and, and enjoy this view, and at some point we'll do a little bit of a 
I mean, it's, it's where to start, really, where to start. We'll do a little bit of a 360 and try and give you some, some names of the mountains. Um, it's just stunning now, um, absolutely stunning. Uh, the wind's got up a wee touch. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I just thought I'd do a wee bit. I mean, I'm, tomorrow morning I'll do it again because um, Glen Cove, for example, is very much in the shadow, which looks stunning right now in terms of photography-wise. But for, for picking up the mountains, you can't quite see the detail that you want to see, but you will see that in the morning when the sun comes up. Right now, though, if you look in the distance behind me, that, that pointy one that kind of stands out on its own, um, I'll kind of zoom in a wee bit um, on an overlay, um, that's Shehalian. Um so that's a, quite a, a famed uh, Munro, um, the rocky one. And then over in the distance, just a bit over to the, to the right there, that's the Lawler's Range. So the, the highest peak there, the, the kind of triangle looking one, um, that's Ben Lawler's itself. And then just over to the left of it is, uh, is Anne Stook. You know, um, one of my very first videos on Anne Stook um, was about a wee scramble up that. So finishing off the Lawler's Range, it was called. Oh, there. Um, I mean, there's so many, so many to, to name up here. Um, like I say, well, I'll, I'll give you a wee look over at Glen Cole right now, um, just so you can see how it looks like. And we'll maybe pink out a couple, couple of pointers, but then we'll, we'll do it properly in the morning. So, um, this is where it does get a bit more interesting. But like I say, I am going to cover this a lot more um, in the morning. The, the bank of water we have in front of us, that's the Blackwater Reservoir. The, uh, the mound, um, you may or may not recognise that from my channel already, that's Benicle East. Um, I've camped on that a couple of times actually. Um, last one was last August, I think it was. So, um, yeah, and then behind there, the pointy one that's straight behind that, that's Dob Derag, also known as Buchel Native Moor, or the Buchel. And then, in the big gap there to the side, we then have the wee buckle. Um, Stop Cory Renak. I mean, I camped on that just before the Noidart trip. Then the highest one at the back there is Bitchin Binan. We've not been up there yet in the channel, but we will. Um, and the rest, I mean, we can point them out. I mean, to the, the left hand side here is the, the ski centre. But really, I think I'm going to do it more justice to wait till tomorrow to point that out. But at the moment, I'm just letting you see the the light shining come down. You know, um, it's fantastic. I just don't want to um, spoil it right now. Um, it's just, you know, the, the light is it's shining this way, so it's making them look like shadows. But in the morning, the, the light will be shining on them, so you'll see all the crags. And so about nine o'clock will be a perfect time for us to to redo a, a Glencoe one, and you can really see uh, how that. But um, in the moment, it just looks stunning, doesn't it? Let's go a wee bit further over this side, and I'll show you what's over here. The big boy! And yeah, in front and centre, that big lump, Ben Nevis. And then the Malmores off to the right hand side, and then the rest of the Glencoe Hills, and the Kinloch Even ones to the left. Just stunning today, isn't it? Um, we're expecting a, some, something else for the, the sunset, I would expect, in a couple hours. Um, we're just going to get some drinks down as now, I would have thought. Um, I'm halfway through a beer. Got some whiskey as well. And, uh, yeah, just keep warm and get cosy and, and enjoy, enjoy a fantastic place for a camp. Not really moved in a while, so just been sat watching the sun go down. It's now the, the clouds kind of burnt away again, so we've got the sun hitting right on us. Oh, feels lovely. Um, just hydrating up some chicken curry, adventure foods one. Um, and then Stephen's just getting his sort of dude, and we're going to find a wee seat. And uh, 
I'm going to get some dinner. Just what a night. What a night. I don't know if this ever gets boring, doesn't he, for me anyway. That's why we keep doing this. But, eh, uh, get that sun setting away down now. Not a half hour away. I always got to keep giving you more footage of this because, well, I mean, let's be honest, it's just, it's why we come up. It's why we do these, these mad things to ourselves, you know, like why we, we drag tents and all sorts of rubbish in our bags to come and park ourselves up on a mountain so we can get this. Absolute stunning of a. Sunset and, and, and by the forecast, you know, hopefully something similar tomorrow morning as well. But at the very least, sunset. I mean, even behind the camera that I've got set up right now over at Shahalian, we're getting that glow, that pinky glow that you get at the winter time when it starts coming down. You know, now as it's coming down now, every mountain's got that own its own silhouette and it's becoming easier for us to, to name and spot, you know. It's just stunning. You know, I'm, I'm sort of keep giving you footage, like I say, um, before we get into the night shots. And, and, and anyway, I'm hoping as well that um, what we're going to get tonight is uh, it's a pretty tidy night. Um, I'm not expecting any roarers or anything like that, but um, you know, definitely, um, I think we're in for one of the darkest skies we'll have had for so some some at least some some pretty tidy snaps. And I'll I'll have the the star lapse camera going going overnight as well. Um, but this is just it's so peaceful and quiet as well. Just us. It's lovely. Nay wind, nay noise. The two of us are just wandering around with our copies, enjoying what is an absolute stunner, absolute stunner of a sunset. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. I'm gonna get my finish my coffee and play tank the whiskey. When in Rome, do you like Romans? When in Carrera, drink Carrera whiskey. Every day. Oh, that's me all tucked up tonight. Um, I've got a wee heater going actually. Um, it's not that cold to be fair. I just fancied, I, I, I got a month or so ago and I've been dying to see test out and see what it's like. But all I'll say is like one minute on it and straight away you're like, oof. You feel the heat, so uh, yeah, so I'll keep a bit of ventil ventilation on while it's on, obviously, because it's gas. Um, but it'd be ideal when it gets to that kind of winter camp just to, you know, um, take the edge off it. But yeah, like I say, I'm going to get in my bag, get set up for the night, and uh, we'll check back in the morning. We've just been outside for the last, well, a couple of hours at least, you know, getting star photos and you know, watch the sunset coming down. It's been uh, been lovely. What a night. So yeah, I think it's about half ten ish now. So we're gonna get settled. Yeah, we've got these star laps in the go. So we'll see what that's that gives us overnight and then uh, we will check back in in the morning. Good night folks. <laughs>
back to it with a wee, a wee heater going, you know, just to dry out the tent. Because just like I mentioned yesterday, Scotland, condensation. Which, I can straight away talk about my sleeping bag. Which is just cosy as hell. Like this has been um, definitely the right move. Um, it's bone dry as well, so it's remained at the temperature it's supposed to remain at. Um, yeah, super cosy. So we've got doors open, just kind of watching to see any movement at the moment. We're in Clag, but um, I do th feel like it's pretty much at our height, and I do think like when the sun comes out, like half seven there, when the sun comes up, I think it'll burn it down and, and like push it down into an inversion, but it, it might just burn it out completely. But I don't think so. Anyway, we're just going to sit here, get warmed up, and um, so get all the kicked up on the stage, not my tent, and then get a brew on. And then uh, I can show you properly in a wee bit what, what our view's going to be like. Oh. And of course, good morning. <laughs> I'll set in coffee um, and then just give you, give you some footage, get the, the tent put away, just time lapse it, probably put that on, but no, and then uh, you know, we'll, start, we'll start the walk back. I still need to get changed, I'm in all my, my night gear, my down gear, and that, but I'll, I'll get changed in a wee minute and then, um, and then uh, we'll start the, start the walk back down. Mm. Right. He's going to be back. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see. Distractions will get away. This is what we waited for. Oh, take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. Oh, I'm done living life with the lights out, doubt with my own doubt. So I think I'll, I'll drip feed some footage in now, just as I was on our way down um, took a bit for the cloud to lift but it is finally lifting now um, it's looking quite nice um, actually turning it alright bit breezy but we are still 400 metres above sea level up here eh? so we're almost back at the station now and that's a good time for us uh, to check out I think on our wee adventure and it has been a wee bit of an adventure you know 
I mean, one of them ones where uh, a couple of things have gone wrong for me in terms of like, I broke my glasses and I've I've lost a foil blanket up there somewhere. Oh, damn. Never mind. Just stupid things like that. But um, overall, you just can't help but uh, feel at peace when you come to a place like Kuror. It's just just a stunning area. Stunning area. So right, I'll leave you with some out footage on the way out. But for me, Hot Mouth Adventures and Stephen. We'll see you guys on the next adventure. And oh, before I forget, I will probably count this as my October summit. And that leaves me with November and December to go. I might get hopefully get another one out this month, because we are only just into October. Um, but this all this definitely counts towards my, my 12th summit. But we'll see how we get on. Anyway, the last thing, just for me, please, if you've liked the videos, don't forget to give it a like. Subscribe if you aren't already. If you just get this is your first time you've checked on the channel. And then uh, just mining. Pass it on to your mates now, you know, and share the wealth. Give us uh, give us comments and feedback and stuff. Uh, but for me, like I say, see you guys in the next adventure. Hopefully pretty soon. Goodbye. <laughs>